Okay, so this uh, video is going to go in, court, in, in line with uh, Lesson 17.1 and 17.2, but I'm going to specifically talk about how to use window pane to graph trig functions. And so you might want to take these notes um, on a separate sheet of paper and um, add it to, to your notes between 17.1 and 17.2, um, because it's going to be um, very important that you understand how to use the window pane to make it easier for you to graph your trig functions. Okay, so first off, Let's start start with the basic structure of a window pane. Okay, it's basically a rectangle split into four equal sections. Okay, so um, you split each each half or each direction in half. So let's talk about what the different parameters of the window pane are. So remember, when we've been doing the window pane, this is beginning. Our left side is our beginning. The right side is our end. So the distance from left to right represents our period. So remember our period equals 2 pi over b. So when you're doing your window pane, you can if you calculate 2 pi divided by the b in your equation, then that's the distance from start to finish, okay? Um the other thing that we've looked at is the top line. So, I'm sorry. Um uh, that was my son. So, um let me start over on the the vertical aspect. So the top line represents the maximum value. The bottom line represents the middle, minimum value. The middle represents the mid value. So if you just watched the video for 12.2, you heard me say that this mid value represents is represented by the D of our equation. So remember our equation is Y equals A sine of B times X minus C plus D. So the D is our midline, okay? It represents our mid height. So notice I'm going to make it a coordinate point. We're actually going to label this as a coordinate point so you know exactly where to, to plot it on your graph, okay? So this, <coughs> this middle point is represented vertically by the D component, <coughs> and the X position <coughs> is going to be whatever phase shift you have. So whatever your C is is going to be um, like right there. <clears throat> now the sine of C is going to be opposite of whatever it is in the equation. So if your equation says plus C, you're actually going to be a, at a negative position. And if it says minus C, then you're going to be at a positive C value. All right. So the point where the, the middle point of the left side of your graph is the coordinate CD, where you just read C and D out of your equation. So then to get how high your uh, piece is vertically, remember the height of your total box is um, the the amplitude is half of your total height, so it takes two amplitudes to make the height. So this is A, and this is A. So if you know where your D position is, you just add A to get to your max, and you subtract A to get to your min. And that's really all it is. So the, the trickiest part, then, is just making sure that you label your period correctly with the right intervals. So let's look at an example and see um, how, how it would work. So let's say that we use this equation. So the first thing I need to be able to do in any equation is I need to be able to identify my A, B, C, and D values to identify those certain parameters. Okay, so first, and, and keep in mind that you're not always going to see or have a change to the, initial va the original value. So first, I'm going to notice that I have a number multiplied out front. That's my A is 2. My B I do not have a number multiplying in front of the, the x or a different number multiplying in front of the x, so my b is just 1. Uh, my c, there's nothing being added or subtracting, so I don't have any movement horizontally, so it's going to be 0. So um, a and b, if, there, if you don't see a specific number change, then it's 1. c and d, if you don't see a specific number, it's 0, all right, because then you would have 0 shift. All right, but my d, I do have a vertical shift going up to. So let's go ahead and um, you can either draw the box and then draw your coordinate grid afterwards, or you can just go straight to a coordinate grid. So let's go ahead and just do this straight on a coordinate grid. And since I know I'm going to have a vertical shift, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the above the x-axis. Okay, so first I'm going to plot my middle point. My middle point comes from the CD. So my midpoint is going to be, on the left side, is going to be at 0, 2. So I'm going to find... 0, 2. Oops. There we go. That's my midpoint. So that's 0, 2. 
that's the left side of my graph, but the at the correct height. So now um, what I want to do is I'm going to draw my vertical part of my box. So this is one, two, three, four. Notice that my box needs to be now too high. So that's the height above and below. So I'm going to go up two and then down two. So that gives me the total height of my box. So I went up two and down two. All right, that's my amplitude. Now what we need to figure out is how we're going to label the x-axis. What I recommend is that on your x-axis, always make your window pane four boxes wide. Okay. Now I know sometimes that makes it really tight on if you're doing uh, graphing paper. Um, you can make it eight boxes wide and every mark happens every two boxes. Okay, so either decide to make it four boxes or eight boxes wide. Um, but if you do four boxes wide, every box is going to be a mark. Okay, so if we're just doing one cycle, then I'm going to be four boxes wide. And so um, what I need to know is what my period is. So let's calculate our period. Our period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1, which is just 2 pi. So that is our standard period if we don't have any kind of um, horizontal transform um, horizontal change. If if B um, if there's no B, then our period should be 2 pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and label the last the fourth mark as 2 pi because remember we started at zero. So half of 2 pi is pi. Half of that is pi over 2, and so the the third mark is going to be 3 pi over 2. Okay, so that's how we would label it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish drawing my box in. So you can do the horizontal components or the vertical component next. It doesn't matter. All right, so I'm going to draw my box in, and it's going to look like that. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to do I have a sine curve or a cosine curve? In this case, I have a sine curve. Where does the sine curve begin? It begins at the midpoint, all right? And so it goes mid max, mid, min, if you want to think about the order that it goes in. All right, so I'm going to start at my middle, and if I start at my middle, I have to finish in my middle. So it goes middle, max, middle, min. So I just draw my four points, and then I can now draw my curve in. If I wanted to continue my graph, then I would simply... I don't have to keep redrawing the window pane, but what I do need to do is I need to continue labeling my x-axis. So uh, if I continue labeling my x-axis, I would need four more marks in order to complete another cycle, my second cycle. And so what I would do is I would just continually continue the labeling of what I have. So if my first cycle ended at 2 pi, the next one's going to end at 4 pi. Halfway between that would be 3 pi. And so then my in between just would be all my pi's over 2. And so notice I went from 1, 3, this would be 5, and that would be 7 pi over 2. Okay, so I could again just take my points and max, middle, mid, middle, hit those points at the next four marks. Now I have two cycles. I could do the same thing in the negative direction if I needed to go in the negative direction um, and just continue the pattern that way. All right. So that was with two parameter changes, an altitude, an amplitude and a vertical shift. So let's look at one more that um, changes um, the horizontal components. We'll do both horizontal components together. All right. So let's look at the next page. All right, so the first thing we want to do for this is at first identify all your A, B, C, D values. All right, so notice that I, I kind of tricked you a little bit. I do have an A value change. Um, normally A is 1, but notice now that I have a negative sign in front, so that's negative 1. So that is going to have an effect on our graph. It's not going to change the size of the height or the height of the graph, but it will change how we draw the curve in later. So you do want to identify that. B is 1 half, that's the number multiplying in front of X. Now notice that it's the number multiplying in front of X, and there's also parentheses. That's important that you have parentheses around your X plus your C value, okay? And then our C is going to be opposite of whatever sign is in the equation, so it's going to be negative pi. And there is no number being added at the end, of, so D is 0. For, so first things, let's go ahead and 
get our graph drawn. So notice that since my amplitude is just going to be 1, I'm going to be both above and I don't have any vertical shift. I'm going to need to balance between um, above and below my x-axis. And since I'm starting at a negative pi value, then I want to include some of my negative x's over here. Okay. So first thing we want to do is let's go ahead and look at the period before we draw our window pane in so that we can label things appropriately in that direction. Okay, so especially anytime you have that horizontal shift or a change to your period, look at that first. So first let's calculate our period. Okay, our period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. So in this case it's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half. So what happens when you divide something by 1 half? You multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 2 over 1. So our new period is 4 pi. So that means instead of it happening really fast, it's going to take a long time for it to happen. So remember when we're labeling our x-axis, uh, we always want to make it um, 4 marks makes a cycle. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to just do several marks, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 4 pi, so we're going to divide 4 pi up into 4 marks, so 4 pi divided into 4, each mark is going to be worth pi. I'm also looking at the fact that my c starts at negative pi, so I know that I need to start at negative pi. That needs to be a point that's labeled. So then every mark after that is going to get me to my next point, so then pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So this is an easier one because it's just all our whole numbers. So I'm just going to go ahead and label all those. All right, so now let's go ahead and put our left midpoint, the CD point. It's going to happen at negative pi 0. So that's going to happen here. So that is the middle of the left side of my window pane. Okay, my amplitude is negative one. I'm not going to take deal with the negative right now. I'm just going to deal with the fact that I'm going to be bouncing between one and negative one. So let's go ahead and draw the left side of my box. It's going to be right here. Now our period is four pi. That doesn't mean I end at four pi because now I'm starting at a different location. It means um, from beginning to end needs to be a value of four pi. So if I start at negative pi, this is 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. We're actually going to end at 3 pi. So I could draw my window pane. Oops, missed that one. Split it in half. And now I'm ready to draw my curve in. So I'm drawing a cosine curve, which normally starts at max to bit, max to max. But because my amplitude is negative, I'm going to flip it over. Instead of starting at the max, now I'm going to start at the minimum. So we're going to start at the minimum. We're going to end at the minimum. Halfway in between is going to be our maximum. And then our quarter points, the ones that don't have the vertical lines, are going to be our midpoints. So we would draw our curve that looks like this. Okay. We can continue it in either direction just by continuing the same pattern. So every mark gets another point. I could do it in the opposite direction, in the negative direction. And so you can see it's pretty easy once you have established your, um, your window pane and the pattern and you have the scale of your axis labeled. It's just a matter of continuing your points to the left or the right. All right, so that's how you do the window pane. I've shown you how to include two parameters together, the vertical parameters and the horizontal parameters. It is possible to combine, have all four parameters um, changing at the same time. And so you, it, those are going to be more complex. But we're going to start off practicing with some simple ones. So if you look at problem number three, what I would like you to do um, is I want you using graph paper, okay? And I have plenty of spare graph paper over where all the, the blank paper is. Um, I want you to graph A through D, all right? And so you probably, you're not going to have space to do it inside your book page. Um, this is in 17.2, but you, uh, what I'd like you to do is I want 
to you to add it to graph paper, and then you're just going to put the graph paper inside your, your pages. And that's what I'm going to look at when I grade uh, 17, is that you have these graphed, okay? So I want you to try to do A, B, C, and D on your own. Um, they're going to be very similar to the ones we just did. Um, notice uh, A and B just have one parameter change. C and D have two parameter changes, but they're either both vertical or both horizontal. Um, and then uh, we'll talk about E through G together as a class, okay? Um, if you want to try E through G and see how you do, great. Uh, but I want you specifically to uh, do A through D. So um, have those completed. Those will be part of your um, activity 17 grade is that you have all of these graphed on graph paper, okay? Good luck.